Hello everyone, Hyper here, and in today's video I wanted to go over some of the most common mistakes I notice when looking at other people's logs. Um, I want to focus in particularly on melee mistakes, but some of these do extend to ranged DPS as well. So if you feel like you haven't been playing quite up to par and wonder what are some things you could improve on, here's a quick list um, that I think should help you out a bit. So the number one most common thing that I notice when it comes to melee DPS on mythic encounters is having poor cooldown management. Um, so if we're only looking at the damaging portion of a DPS's role, since you know as a damage dealer that is a pretty large portion of what you do besides staying alive and contributing in utility and other ways, actually dealing damage is a big part of that. And we've gotten to a point and wow where cooldowns are everything for most of these classes um and if you miss time cooldowns you're going to see a significant drop in your overall damage so what do i mean by this um on a fight like shriekwing for example shriekwing phases into the intermission um at a point where you could technically like press a cooldown right before she phases but you're only going to get like two or three seconds of use. Whereas if you wait to use those cooldowns until Shriek Queen comes back down from the intermission, then you get a lot um, more use out of them. Obviously, that's like a very simple example. Um, as you move throughout the raid, this becomes more and more difficult. For example, um, on Sire, which is like the other extreme, managing your cooldowns by delaying your two minute cooldowns or pressing it earlier than you normally would can mean the difference between having it up at a certain point in the fight and not. So as, as a two minute cooldown class, if you press your two minute cooldown right on pull, then you can technically press it every single time it's up um, and it's going to be up for the second add in phase two. However, if you delay it for those four or five uh, seconds at the beginning, like you would normally on any other boss, that means that it's going to be up late at the middle point of the encounter where you'd want it for the ad. So just things like that can make a huge difference in the amount of effective damage you can deal. And that is another big misconception between um, players because if you look at a log and you look at, okay, this player did the most damage on a specific encounter, that more often than not has some implications that as a progression player you're not going to want to repeat uh, for example to parse you need to usually play a lot more patty play style where you look for damage in places where it's not efficient damage but it is more overall damage so managing your cooldowns correctly to get efficient damage that will ultimately help you kill the boss in my book is miles more important than just pressing your cooldowns to get the most damage that you can out of your class um, because ultimately if you did 10k dps on a fight but you didn't manage to kill it uh, whereas if you would have done you know 8 or 9k dps but you put your cooldowns in the correct spots throughout the encounter and you did kill the boss that ends up being a lot more efficient in my book number two is an issue that seems to be um very common is either being too passive or too aggressive as a DPS. And what I mean by that is if you look at a DPS player's logs, usually you just look at the percentile that they parse at. That's what most people do. Okay, um, you open Warcraft logs, they're all orange. They must be a good player. Though there are more implications to that as well because you can be a very aggressive player who makes a lot of mistakes but then at the end of the day, when you kill the boss, you're going to have high DPS because you play riskier. Um, or on the other end of this, you can be a very passive player who always plays to survive rather than doing damage, um, which might not translate well on logs, but can also be an issue. Um, so it is very rare that I find a player who strikes the middle ground where they do really good damage um but they only push their class to the point where um they're not just constantly dying every pull to give you an example of a player who strikes that balance and pushes it to the absolute extreme 
Um, I'm fired up in limit is known for doing insane DPS on top of pushing his class to the absolute limit in terms of what it can survive and what it can do mechanically. So if you ever watch him play, which at some point you probably have if you're into mythic raiding, um, you'll notice that he moves out of mechanics at a very narrow window. So if there's like something that is about to hit the ground and you need to move out of it, he barely takes a step outside of it where you kind of question if it's going to hit him or not, but then it usually doesn't. Um, or the way he uses survivability, movement, and utility that his class has to get more damage um, is like a perfect example of that player who found the balance between pushing his damage to the extreme, but also using his class's utility and survivability and mobility uh, to be able to do that. On the other hand, whenever I look at logs for like potential recruits, for example, I tend to notice that they swing either to being a passive player where they have really good defensive usage, they constantly move out of mechanics, they don't get hit much, um, you know, they healthstone, health bot, all that good stuff, but then their damage kind of suffers. Um, whereas other players that tend to apply who have really good damage typically tend to have lower survivability because they do sacrifice some of that uh, mechanical play in favor of getting more DPS. So striking the balance between being too passive and too aggressive can make you a much better raider. And it's also important to know when you can push your class to do more damage at the expense of taking more damage in return. The third point, which kind of ties into the previous one, is poor defensive usage. Um, well, I said that I either see players who apply to our guild be too passive or too aggressive. It is much more rare to see a player that overuses their defensive cooldowns than a player who just barely does. Um, and when I talk about defensives, there's a few things. Um, Hellstones, health pots, if you're a Kyrian, you know, Kyrian pot, on top of anything that your class has to avoid taking damage. And if you get to a mythic rating level, having good defensive usage is absolutely crucial. In a recent video, um, Max from Limit was explaining how using a health stone can actually save someone else's life, um, on Sludge Fist in particular. But that extends to defensives as well. Because, for example, if there are three or four people in danger of dying, and your healer has to make a choice between healing one of those three players, um, if one of those players had a defensive available that they didn't use, that could have potentially saved the other two players. So it's a little bit of a, a weird dilemma, but you using your cooldowns, your defensive cooldowns better, is actually not only a benefit for you for staying alive, but also for other players in your raid. So it's important that you look at defensive usage and defensive cooldowns, not only as a personal thing, but something that extends to your entire raid group. Moving on to point four, um, this is something I see a lot on logs when I do coaching, is melee DPS not pressing their abilities while moving. Um, and this is usually a result of one, probably suboptimal keybinds that don't allow you to move your character and do your rotation at the same time. And two, just the brain capacity, um, even myself on some encounters that are very mechanic heavy, where I need to execute very precise movements um, or need to pay attention to timers on top of other things, I tend to sometimes um, under-prioritize pressing my actual rotation. So if you have good keybinds, make sure that as a melee DPS, you're always using those abilities while you're moving. Because as a ranged DPS, um, your movements are more macro movements where you need to plan, okay, after these two globals, I'm going to move a few steps because I have some instant casts coming up. Whereas as a melee DPS, your movements are a lot more micro and in the moment. So if there's a mechanic coming out, um, as a melee DPS, in our head, we don't think, okay, I'm going to press these three abilities, then I'm going to move. Because as a melee DPS, you can react to anything that happens without really losing um, damage, just because we don't have any casted abilities. So having a keybinding system set up that allows you to DPS while moving is extremely important. And if you need help with that, there I do have a keybinding video that you can check out.
And then the last point, which I see happen all the time in class discords in particular. While class discords are an absolutely fantastic resource for improving your gameplay, they do tend to sometimes um, over fixate on very minor things that you could optimize. So unless you're already playing your class at a 99% efficiency, um, looking at those minor optimizations is actually the wrong way to go about improving your gameplay. One of the most common questions I get is about my opener as an unholy DK. Um, and, you know, I tell people what my opener is, but I always try to stress the point that while your op opener is important, your opener only makes up 1-2% to 2 of the time that you spend in the encounter. And yes, while your opener is more heavily weighed in terms of the amount of damage you do during it, after that you have a ton of time that you spend where you're not in your opener, where you're pressing buttons. And in general, even if you're doing the correct opener, you can make up or lose a lot more DPS uh, throughout the encounter um, after your opener is essentially over. And the opener is just a very specific example. If you're looking at your own logs, I find that players uh, tend to over fixate on very minor errors that yes, did cost them a couple of DPS, but in the long term, term and in the big picture, um, it was nowhere near as impactful as some of the other mistakes that they made. So always try to look at the big picture when you're looking at improving your DPS and then move down to smaller and smaller and smaller mistakes that will have overall a less impact on your gameplay, your DPS, and your throughput as a melee DPS. And again, just to give you an example of what a big picture uh, change or issue would be, is downtime. As a melee DPS, downtime is the biggest source of damage loss that you will have throughout an encounter. And minimizing downtime will essentially maximize your DPS. It is a very simple thing to say, but a lot more difficult to actually execute. So while you might look at your opener and be like, okay, I pressed those two buttons in the wrong order, I need to fix that. Yes, that's something that you can improve on, but then ignoring something like, I moved out of melee range of the boss for five seconds, um, that is, in the big picture, a lot bigger mistake that could be improved upon. So just make sure that you're focusing on the big picture when looking at your DPS. Um, so downtime, cooldown usage, um, and things like that, rather than the minute mistakes that you make throughout an encounter. Obviously, once you've improved to a level where you feel confident, then you can start focusing on those minute mistakes that will net you a few more DPS throughout a fight. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it and it helped you out a little bit. Um, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the section below, or you can also join my Discord where I can help you out. Um, but again, thanks for watching the video and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.